From time to time, as a poker player, you might want to play a tournament or a cash game that's above your bankroll because you think you have an edge against that field, but you can't take the volatility, the variance in outcomes. So you'd look for investors to raise capital. And in poker, we call these investors stakers and backers. It's two types of raising capital to play above your bankroll. We'll look at staking first. So let's say this pie chart is 100% of your action in a poker tournament. And you want to keep 50% for yourself. So that's you, smiley face. But you're willing to sell 50% to stakers. And you find two people who are each willing to take 25%. So just like buying stock in a company, they've bought 25% of your winnings. Their profit is proportional to the percentage of the buy-in that they pay. The only complication is something called markup. And we'll go over that in a couple minutes, but let's talk about backing now at the basic level. Your buy-in and your prize now no longer have a direct relationship. Your buy-in is paid by a backer 100% from the backer. And in exchange for that, he expects 50% of your winnings. The horse, or the player, and the backer split any winnings 50%. Here, the complication is something called makeup. And I know it, there's only one letter difference between markup and makeup, but they're actually very different. So let's talk about what they each mean right now. For example, let's say you want to play the $10,000 main event at the World Series of Poker. And you're a very good online player, but your average buy-in is $50 online. So 10K is a ton of money to plunk down on one multi-table tournament. So you're looking to sell half of your action. If we considered each dollar of the buy-in one share, half would be 5,000 shares. And you don't just sell this at one-to-one -one, because you're a good player you sell it at a markup. So you actually charge $1.25 per share instead of $1. So for that 5,000 share chunk, you're actually going to receive $6,250 from your stakers. So you might notice you actually sort of instantly profited $1,250. What justifies this? So there's a few things that are actually very good justification for markup. One is your labor. I mean, you're going to be the person sitting at the table for several hours, in the case of the main event, up to eight days. And you also have expenses. You have to pay hotel, food. And finally, you're a good player. So your stakers have to pay a skill premium. And this is why you might see different players asking different levels of markup. It's not because their expenses are higher or they have to spend more hours at the table, it's that their time at the table is more valuable. They're just better. Markups can range anywhere from 1.1 to 1.5 and above. Let's move on now to makeup, the special complication in a backing arrangement. It refers to the debt that the horse accumulates as he plays more and more tournaments without showing a profit. It's not money that you owe the backer out of your bank account. You only have to pay it out of future winnings in tournaments that you're backed by that backer. So let's say you played three tournaments over a three-week period, and you, you just lose your buy-in in all three. So you're minus 10K in the first, minus 3K, minus 2K. So over those three weeks, you're down 15K. We say you're fifteen thousand dollars in makeup. Now the fourth week, you actually win a tournament, and your net winnings are one hundred thousand dollars. You feel great, and you you might think, "Oh, great! I get fifty percent of my winnings, so I just made fifty thousand dollars." But you have to remember you're in makeup, which means we have to subtract your $15,000 in makeup from your 100k score and your net net winnings are $85,000 so you get half of that 
42.5K.